Good morning. I've gotten a late start this morning. I was about two-thirds of the way through my first screencast when all the power winked out, so no guarantee that that won't happen again, but I'm trying to work through this pretty quickly. We are on, this is Monday, June the 18th, and I have a bunch of links that I've already put into that the daily links for the day. Um, over in the inbox, you'll see more links. Some of these I'm going to get rid of. Um, some that are already in there that I put du duplicates in. Um, but it's um, there's you can mess around with this. I gave you the username and password, so you can fiddle with this if you want. I mean, don't worry. You're not going to break it. If you do break it, we'll fix it. Um, that's how. That's how we learn. That's sort of the skateboarder's creed, which brings me to one of the first ones of these that I'd like to talk about. It's a very, very interesting site. It's a YouTube video that uses animation. It's called. Um, Hip Hop Genius Remixing High School Education. It doesn't really matter what your opinion of hip hop is. This is a great video about how we take and can use our students' interests to piggyback on our interests or vice versa. When I was 20 years old, I started teaching at a juvenile prison. While there were many things that separated us, I quickly discovered my students and I had one big thing in common, our love of hip hop. For the next few years, rap music became the main content for the classes I taught, and I saw disengaged students emerge as leaders and experts. Through engaging elements of hip hop culture together, students and I learned language arts, life skills, and to love each other and ourselves more. As I continue to observe the ways in which our education system is rigged against black and Latino students and students from low-income communities, I ask myself, what else we as educators could learn from hip-hop, the insanely innovative and influential global phenomenon that has emerged from those very same communities? When I say hip-hop, I'm not just talking about music or music, graffiti, and dance, which are considered essential elements. I'm referring to the blend of instincts, confidence, and ingenuity that develops in oppressed communities as has been demonstrated through the evolution of hip-hop culture. I'm talking about a Jamaican teenager in the South Bronx picking two records of the same song and fading back and forth between them to create a new musical composition by playing the most danceable segment over and over. Uh, you need to watch the rest of this video. It really is amazing and um, eye-opening. The next item on the list is one that is um, it's basically a collection of tools, but it's... Uh, curated in a way that's quite nice. It's called Dirt. Bamboo Dirt. And it's where you can find digital research tools. And what's really cool is that if you want to search, you can. Or if you want to find tools that help you collect data, you can. Or to make a screencast, you can. Or to take notes and annotate resources you can. It's a great place to start if you're looking for a way to do something online digitally. Next, the future 2050. I don't know what the future is going to be in 2050. I won't be around to know it, but it is fun to speculate. And that's exactly what this site does, it speculates. Um, this is, uh, you know, even if you're in an English class, you can learn, you can teach lots of stuff from this. For example, do you agree or disagree? If you agree, what are the implications? If you disagree, what are the implications? What are the implications if you agree and are wrong, or if you disagree and are wrong? Uh, what do this? What does this data mean? What does it mean that you'll be able to? Your generation, this generation, is going to live a lot longer. What does it mean? that fish will no longer be on the menu? What does it mean uh, that race is no longer part of social class? What does it mean, what is an echo exile? So it's just wide open what this, what this tool does. And it also brings up the, the, the prospect of data visualization in the classroom. It's a real nice way to, you can, you can go in and out of this site, no problem. 
Next is one of the most fun ways to learn how to use Google that I've ever seen. And I've used a lot of them. They call this an interactive infographic. And that's exactly what it is. So instead of just giving you a list or a blog post, you just click and go. And what it does is it shows you how to do things. It fills in the blanks there for you. It allows you to fill in the blanks if you want to. And it gives you information about the symbols. You know, it's just a great tutorial on how to use Google. Just wonderful. And it also has uh, some items in here, at least one that I had never seen before anywhere else. So, you know, you can assign this for students to work through. You can assign parts of it to eat to, to groups and get them to show it to the class. Um, I wanted to show you one item here that was rather astonishing. You can drag an image into here. It will search. It will do the search for search by that image, and I never know you could do that. Now, I don't know how useful it is, but it is it is something that I'm, I'm, I wonder how it got by me. So there are, you know, this is also the site for make use of, which is excellent. It's got all kinds of tips and stuff to use up here on the on the bar up here. So it's just excellent, excellent. Site. I love this right here because it's Larry Lazo at his best. This is best resources for helping teens to learn how to appreciate sleep. I was thinking about what, uh, how you could use this site, and uh, for one thing, it teaches students how to use a blog to aggregate information, uh, to 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 make meaning like the meaning here is this is these are all the articles that are related to learning learning about the importance of sleep and uh, you know how did he do this you could ask students about that and then you can go out and get them to do the same thing or maybe you just want to use this list here and you could have a classroom project where everybody uh, for a semester considers the importance of sleep uh, it doesn't matter what kind of class it could be a biology class a health class uh, you know, this can go down uh, and needs to go down to the, the lowest levels possible uh, in, you know, uh, K through 12. You can assign students, uh, depending upon their reading ability, um, texts, you know, all these various texts, and then they can become experts on it and report back to the group. Um, you can have them do surveys based on the information that they've got. It's just really wide open the possibilities here uh, so you know it allows you to seek information it allows you to make sense of information and it allows you to share information and perhaps uh, as this is a group project there would be group activities based upon this uh, um, upon this and making sure that students get better sleep at night this is uh, another site that aggregates tools and the like I think it bears in mind a little bit to take a look at you know the various parts of this site. You have a search place here, and it also there's this is the directory, but it also has a blog and a members area, and the classic go to web, which is what I first started using, and a way to suggest an apps and a way to provide feedback. It also has a way to select the most popular the things that are tagged as the most popular, or if you're looking for something specific. Well, over here, it allows you to switch back and forth between a tiled version, which might be more appealing to some people who are visual, or it allows you to switch back to the list version. I like to go to the most popular tagged site, and of course, it's got your old friends here that you probably know some of these. I've never seen this one before. Friv. And you'll notice it gives you a little a little bit about it here. And you 
can go to the site if you want to. Um, I'll give you the website over here and some more tags if you want to look at that. Of course, I couldn't recommend this site for kids simply because of this right here. You can get out of that. You can do different things with it, but I, you know. <clears throat> here is something called LearnZillion. What I like about this is that um, this is a great website, Hack Education. It's Audrey Waters, and it's it's really an excellent site. Well, I don't. It's not quite as busy as Larry Ferlazzo's, but it's got lots of cool information in it. And it talks about a site called LearnZillion, which is like Khan Academy, and she gives extensive blog posts with relevant material. And uh, you know, for professional development, there's really not a whole lot better for filtering information than Audrey Waters is hack education site. Um, this site, P2PU, it's peer-to-peer -peer university and basically it is uh, all kinds of professional development with the emphasis on learning anything with your peers. And well, as important, it's online and it's totally free. So you can browse groups and courses. And you can see, um, like here's one on curating content. I'm going to click on that. And once you're here, you can join the community. You can there are various tasks you can do to learn more. And down here, you can get help from various people who have offered to help. Here's a list of peers who are looking at this site as well. And you can click on Start the Challenge right here. Of course, it takes you to where you sign in, and, and then you're off. <clears throat> Here, Nick Peachy, he's just great. Um, he has so many cool uh, things, and this one is especially cool. It involves using something to read lists, where students can create their own ebook for online articles. Now, they can also create their own online articles on a blog, and then you can pull all that stuff together into a read list book. So, it's you might you might think, well, that's just a bunch of copyright problems to worry about there, but it's not. Uh, you can simply create books with your students using their own writing. And of course, over here on this side, you can look up some of his popular posts and you know find out what he's doing and a cool thing about Peachy is that he also includes related links which is wonderful as well as he has lots of tools at the top of the page as well that you can you can talk to him you can consult with him he has just all kinds of cool stuff Last, free technology for teeter, teachers. This is Richard Byrne. He's like Nick Peachy. You know, everybody knows him. And what you've got here is something called Fetch Notes. Uh, if you're looking for ways to record information online, what I like about it is that it's not just for iPods and iPads, it's also for Androids. So, uh, Richard Byrne always has cool stuff, and uh, it's well worth looking at everything he's got on this site. Okay, 
that's it for today. There's a lot more I could have put in there, obviously, but I don't want to make it do. Just look at look at a single link. If you see something that you're that I piqued your interest in, uh, I'm going to get rid of the rest of these items and start afresh for tomorrow. See you then. This is Terry Elliott for the Western Kentucky University Writing Project.